Okay, in this video, I want to look at some new models that are out, but also I want to look at some concepts uh, that are going on and some things that we're seeing happen around large language models. So it seems nowadays everyone is releasing a new fine-tuned version of Model X, Model Y, Model Z, especially the models that are quite good. People are basically realizing that, okay, if you train this on more data, if you change the data, you can get some good results out of these things. So the models we're going to look at today are basically a group of models that are based on the Wizard LM. So just to recap, uh, Wizard LM was a model that came out about a month ago, was very interesting, and its co contribution as a paper was more about creating the data set than it was the actual training of the model itself. But they released a 7 billion parameter model, and it turned out that model was pretty nice in most ways. So people have been playing around with this and looking at what they can do. And there is a big sort of push towards having unfiltered models. And th this is one of the things I want to focus on in this video is that, yes, I'll show you some models and we'll look at the, the quality briefly and stuff like that. But uh, it's getting to the point now where there are not great ways to benchmark these models. And I kind of feel like me showing you my prompt doesn't really help you that much. You should really just take the collab, run it, play around with it yourself, see if it's a good model for you or not a good model for you. We've passed the days of where suddenly each model is a step forward from what they were. They're now becoming iterations, but those iterations can be quite important. So this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the whole sort of unfiltered models. The idea of having a model that doesn't uh, say as a large language model. I get this concept. I think it's a really interesting concept too, because if you think about how we train these models, we've got the pre-training, which is 99% of the compute normally. And most of these models that people are releasing are based on the Llama Meta's model or a series of models that they basically released. But then on top of the pre-training, we've also got the instruction fine tuning or the supervised fine tuning that's going on. And then in some of the newer models, we're starting to see the RLHF or the RL AIF, which is more the alignment of the model and pushing the direction of what the model should be going for in the way that it's aligned. So I totally get that a lot of people don't want to have their models aligned in the same way that OpenAI is. So most of these models are basically using distilled data sets from OpenAI. The legality of that is up for debate. The general consensus at the moment is that you probably wouldn't want to use this in something commercial that is going to be facing uh, consumers. That said, I am definitely seeing that some people are using these in back office ways or something like that for a variety of different tasks. And I think more than that, a lot of people want to run these on their own machine or have their own server or that kind of thing. So the idea here with these models is that while they're basically taking the pre-training from Meta, the supervised fine tuning data sets from things like the evolved instruction data set from, from this and, and the Vicuna data set and a number of other data sets that are out there, the shared GPT data sets, all these are distilled data sets. Then it comes to the third element of where do you do the alignment? And the interesting thing is that the way a lot of these models are going is that they're not doing any alignment. They're basically leaving it up to you to decide how you want to do the alignment. So what first started out looking just like, you know, people wanting to be able to ask uh, a model for something illegal or something like that. Now, I think it's really gone beyond that, that people really want to be able to have a model that responds in the way that they want it to respond. And that could be political views, that could be religious views, it could be a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I think this is a really interesting area that we're going down in the open source community. Clearly, with OpenAI and I think with Anthropic and some of the others, they're going for a very specific type of alignment that's probably aligned to, you know, what their customers want, uh, a whole bunch of safety factors. Just this week, we've seen Sam Altman uh, testifying before Congress. All these sorts of things are forcing them to go in alignment in a certain way. 
And this leaves it up to open source to basically look at doing the alignment uh, in other ways. So let, let's jump into the uh, models themselves. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the cool things that are out there at the moment that I'm, I'm seeing. So the first one that I started looking at for this was basically the Wizard uh, Mega 13B. And this is basically trained on three distilled data sets, ShareGPT, Wizard LM, and Wizard for Kuhn. And it, you could think of this as, I guess the word mega is really good in here, that they've just taken everything and, and chucked it in there. I'm kind of surprised that people are not using some of the actual open data sets for this. So like the Koala model was trained on a stories and poems data set, which isn't distilled. That would be good, it seems to me, to add into these. But anyway, people are going for, for this kind of uh, thing. And generally, you're going to get pretty good results from this. So uh, if we have a look at, at just sort of playing through this, I've put together a notebook for, for each of these, and I'll put this up. This basically lets you bring it in and just use it as a normal model. We get pretty decent results out of most of these things for this. So you have a play with it yourself, see if it's a model that you want to use for yourself. So if we look at the data sets for this, you'll see that these are trained on a lot of the unfiltered data sets. And actually that's what led me to some of the other models that I'm going to look at, that a lot of these models have been created by Eric Hartford. And he's put a lot of effort into going through and taking out the sort of alignment idea questions of where a model won't answer something or will answer something in a certain way because it's an AI language model. You've all seen this before where you ask it something and often it's something very benign, but it will be basically answer in that, oh, as an AI language model, I can X, Y, Z kind of thing. Definitely we see this when we look at questions like I've put in here before, as an AI, do you like the Simpsons? These models tend to respond much more in actually giving you an answer here of where we've got, you know, yes, I enjoy watching the Simpsons, and then giving us more of the answer here. Okay, so my issue my issue with this model would be that if we look at the actual training, it seems to have been done in a slightly unusual way in that they've basically had multiple types of how to do the prompting for the model. So we see this sort of instruction assistant way, which is uh, quite common for one, and the, another sort of being the user assistant. And the thing is not great having both of these. You're kind of... Uh, forcing the model to learn things two ways. Now, I think they've tried to make it like it's an instruction model and a chat model. I'm not sure what the, the thinking behind that is, but it seems like that's an issue. And then the other small issue is that just the, how they're dealing with the EOS token. So the end of sentence token here is still showing up there. That's frustrating with a lot of these models. So, and I don't mean to criticize them. I just think it's like an interesting thing to look at. I think the challenge is everyone's rushing to put these models out, that it causes a lot of these things to go unnoticed. So one of the things that this model has, or the group who've done this model have done, is basically release framework for doing the training, for adding some of the, some things into this, which looks really interesting as well. After looking at this model, I went through and found what Eric Hartford was doing. So this, I think, is, he's, is some really interesting stuff. So first off, he's basically done unfiltered versions of these uh, data sets, which is really cool, right? So that alone, I think, is quite a, a good contribution for this. And then he's basically taken these and used them to train up a, a bunch of models. So there are a couple of his models that I've put in here. This is the Wizard Vicuna 7B model. There's both a, a 7B and a 13B of these. You can just swap this out. It'd be uh, quite easy to try them out. And I found that it's interesting just looking at the responses for this. On this one, I wasn't getting great responses for certain prompts. Uh, for other prompts, certainly good, but for some prompts, not so great for this. The other one that he released is basically the Wizard LM. 7B uncensored. And for me, this is definitely a very nice model. I, I find that it has the advantage of giving us good results out, but it seems to be much more on point than some of the other models. I'm not sure if that's which data sets he's gone through and stuff like that for this. But again, I'll give you the collabs, go and play with it yourself, see which is the best model for you. I like a lot that 
that we're getting this unaligned version of a model. And this sort of raises the question of where do we go from here in that really as the RLHF stuff and the RLAIF stuff becomes more available, people are going to need to think about, okay, what sort of alignment do we want to have with these kind of models? I can see going forward that there really should be multiple versions of the alignment going forward, not just for things like political things and religion, but even if we want to give these kind of models to children, what do we want it to be like? So this is something that's going to really be interesting going forward and looking at what's going to come out of this. Another issue to think about going forward with this kind of stuff is that we're starting to see everyone train on the same data sets. So the models are becoming quite similar in some ways. So there is definitely the opportunity there for what's going to be new data that will make models better. And this is something that there's an active area of research. A lot of people are thinking about, okay, how can we do more and varied kinds of instruction fine tuning to set these models up? And then also with the alignment fine tuning as well. Anyway, I, I don't want to make this video long, so have a play with the models. There's some really good work that people have done in doing this. I think it's worth checking them out. If you are looking for a model, remember these really are not models that you can use commercially, but they're models that you can certainly play around with on your uh, computer at home. There's something that I wouldn't say is on par with the chat GPT or GPT-4, uh, but they're definitely useful. They definitely have their place. And the fact that these are non-aligned kind of models makes them very interesting for where do we go with these for doing something in the future. Anyway, as always, if you've got questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.